Welcome to Channel Tribe. In this Ask Me Anything session, we will be hearing from Jyoti Gupta on all things tech, quality, and leadership. Hello, welcome once again to this Ask Me Anything session on all things tech, leadership, quality, and leadership with Jyoti Gupta, who is the VP of Engineering at Zupi. Uh, before I move forward, I would like to give a huge shout out to Browser Stack, our uh, exclusive sponsor to our all community events, and our premier sponsor for all our conferences. Uh, Browser Stack has been of great help to us in doing community events uh, like this on a pro bono basis. With that, uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, Jyoti to all of you. So Jyoti uh, has about nine plus years of experience. She, uh, even though you might not see the experience uh, years as very high, but she has worked with some of the amazing companies like uh, Amazon, Lime Road, and she founded her own company, uh, which she eventually sold it to. Uh, which uh, she did her own startup called Rank Me Online, which was eventually acquired by Elevate Media in 2020. She has also worked with uh, companies like CureFit on digital health modules. She has worked on uh, with Lime Road on supply chain in solutions and infrastructure scaling. And now she's heading uh, the engineering division of the uh, Zupi as VP and uh, <clears throat> building super fun and exciting games at Zupi. So quite, quite a diverse range of experience in terms of domains, in terms of the work done. And I think it's a great uh, starting step to have uh, uh, Jyoti with us uh, for our engineering talks. With that, I'd like to call Jyoti on stage. Hi, Ashutosh. Uh, welcome, Jyoti, once again, formally. Uh, we interestingly met uh, backstage a few minutes back, but uh, this is a formal welcome to you. Okay. With that, I think let's start, Jyoti. Uh, the first question. Uh, you are an engineering leader and you you also lead quality teams, right? My question, my first question, and which is my fundamental problem uh, with engineering teams is they are very loosely connected to business problems. They, they, they sit in their own silos of engineering, right? So my question here is how can engineering teams be more closely integrated with business teams? And how can a junior level employee, let's say like an SD1 or a SD1 also closely integrate her his or her work with business teams. Okay. So uh, let me just start off with a very broad domain of what uh, engineering focuses on. So there are two types of companies. There are product companies and then there are service-based companies. In service-based companies, there is basically no notion of a business in terms of a product that, that they are building. It's majorly like you are completing the client's requirements and then you are making sure that they are done in the right manner. So primarily there is a very less or uh, interaction with the business. That's uh, having said that uh, when we come to product based companies, it's really very, very important for um, business to be in sync with what the engineering is doing and vice versa as well. Uh, I basically regard both product majorly and technology to be a kind of a marriage right where both the both the teams or both the parties have to be fully involved know what are the flaws of each other know what are the uh, the advantages or the strengths are of each other so that they both can play with on their strengths and uh, make sure that every uh, that the other team is covering their yeah, the other one's flaws so that's where i see the partnership growing and if that happens if this marriage becomes a very a happy one then this can do wonders to to a business and if it doesn't work well no matter whatever you do uh whatever uh good the idea is that business is not going to be very successful because inherently the employees the organization is not working on their full potential so um when we come to the engineering side of things uh because i'm also an engineer by myself so i know what kind of uh, an ecosystem that we are built with. We basically uh, think that in terms of very logical, but we think in terms of input to output, right? If I take something, I will uh, code it up and I, that is the output that I'm expecting of. However, in business, things are not uh, that much easier to understand. We need to be very uh, open to subjectiveness. Uh, just a second. Okay, I am getting the question popped up on the screen and it's a little bit distracting. So okay, so I'll I'll yeah. remove this. I'll remove this then. 
I think that is it's okay. I'll remove this. I'll remove I the guess. question. If that's so, uh, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. So what happened? So uh, so to basically to men to make sure that uh, both the teams, engineering and the business teams, understand each other's ways of working and making sure that they are appreciating each other's work. Many times I have seen that uh, engineering teams feel <coughs> that their work is more important. and the business teams are just doing what the end output that they are giving and in the other terms business teams think that they are running the show and engineering is just doing what is uh, expected out, out of them or just given just like kind of writing what they have been told to so Correct. both the team need to be very uh, you uh, you can say they need to work with Homogeneous. a lot of humility modesty and understand that each of the uh, the work that both the teams are doing is extremely important and not everybody can do what the other teams are doing a business person cannot do with engineering and vice versa engineering cannot be as focused with the business as they are expect as they think that they can do how uh, an sd1 or a newbie tester i will call it engineering because for me sd1 or sd or qa are both the same so yeah. for engineers for engineers to have that kind of a integration with the business team they need to be very open to understanding what the business is about a lot of times they miss uh, <coughs> to understand what, what is tac what is ltv what is yeah. dau what is mu and if you do not know that you won't be able to contribute to the product okay and in the end everything in the ecosystem works on creating value there if you are not creating value you will not be able to be uh, integrating well you will not be functioning well and uh, delivering on what you are expected of so i would expect the engineering teams to be more focused on the product uh, that they are building how they are building understand the data the metrics about it and then create some kind of solutions that can work for and in uh, work for the business and basically contribute to those solutions as well not just keep on just doing what the task is got it i think that made, that makes a lot of sense that uh, at least be uh, so i i mean first step is the acceptance step step that okay we are not yet so open to business and we should be more open to business and yet and then start working towards it other acceptance if there is no acceptance to it then the openness will also not come eventually so i think that's what is very important that, that is the, the meta level of thing like if you solve the acceptance problems almost 80% of the problem <laughs> is already solved sorry that's true and that's what we keep discussing internally in the test drive also that acceptance to problems is the first step to solving the problem and, and then exactly. eventually find solution to solutions are around us we just need to find those solutions uh that's true uh, okay uh now i have this question but i'll i i again put this on a more generic form uh because the technology world is rapidly changing the business world is rapidly changing in general so the macroeconomic environment is rapidly changing what is the best way for i i initially kept it as a tester question what what's the best way for a tester to stay relevant uh, in this rapidly changing tech, 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 technical world and the business world but i'll put it on a larger frame what's the best way for an engineer Most relevant in today's world of rapid change in technology and macroeconomics. Yeah, I think um, this this AMA is also one of the ways of understanding what is happening in the industry. And uh, if people are coming here, people already know what they need to do. Uh, apart from that, I would say like uh, there has to be more focus on. knowing uh, the community around the for example if you are very focused on understanding how distributed systems work you should basically focus on some of the products in a distributed distributed uh, uh, architectures uh, ecosystem and then basically uh, go very deep into those problems and solve uh, basically understand how were they solved similarly there are a lot of youtube channels there are uh, linkedin communities and other communities that basically uh people should be focusing on rather than uh, i have one more interesting thing to say here that uh, a lot of times we spend money on a lot of an entertainment things for example we'll <laughs> buy a netflix package we'll go out and watch a movie of 500 bucks but for people to actually pay for some learning yeah it's a different <coughs> thing that 
they will not pay 500 rupees for a git uh, uh, git uh, git recording or a session but they will be able to pay 500 bucks for a box of popcorns <laughs> okay yeah. and that is the problem i think in in our uh, ecosystem is because we try to get the learnings for free like we'll go to torrent or any downloadable way to get that book for free instead of buying the book from amazon or some other yeah. uh, online shop so i would also expect everybody to focus on uh, learning not just as a part of like not just as like some third third thing that they are doing but focus them and spend money because once you spend money you will feel more focused towards completing that task yeah. like coming from a real money gaming company uh, uh, it because it makes more sense that once you put your money on the problem you will be automatically able to solve that problem as well so yeah that's what my takeaways from this uh, that, that that's very true that if you put in your money uh... let's say uh, when we put uh, when we saw shark tank in india right so they always uh, they always uh, negotiate on equity number right and they say higher the equity more the skin in the game so more so if you put in money or if you put in uh, a, 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 a let's say something which which you value a lot then your skin in the game is a lot higher and then your intent towards learning will be a lot higher in general right so yeah so, so from, yeah from that that's that you can bring a thirsty person to water but you can't make him drink that water drink water okay? yeah. to make so yeah. if you want that person to drink that water you that person has to has to feel that uh, like urge from inside and that can only come right. if uh, if there's something at stake it can be uh, like it can be anything money is one of the things that can be at stake card yeah that, that's very true uh, I, i think uh, very fundamental advice uh the next question which i would like to ask at this point in time is this one uh, now in now uh, i'm going a little uh, specific into testing in general okay so there is a lot of uh, uh, there is a lot of talks around uh, sdh qa automation manual and, and so from your perspective and your view, your eagle view of things as an engineering leader do you think uh uh sdh are the future of testing and is uh, and is a non sdh role going to be defunct in future or your view from an eagle eye perspective as an engineering leader see as an engineering leader i don't see that this question is framed correctly i will say that as uh, the future of testing is basically uh, to understand how can we make our products better okay in, as an engineering leader my goal is to make the product better it can come from anything right if Correct. i see how how in how testers or as that community or the whole qa part can solve this problem i would basically see uh not in terms of the skill that they are putting but what kind of value they are driving the value is my product should be better uh than before okay the, what it was uh, 10 days back to now it should be better and uh, having said uh, a lot of people have must have gone and experienced chat gpt as well so Correct. what i i basically expect is that uh, in the longer term and in the future there will be the requirement of sdets who can code to code the code that basically codes the whole framework applications etc okay we basically may not need people to just code the framework applications to their own product problems but uh, create that code which can basically do all these things as a platform initiators so i would basically see that as the future of testing also i would see a future of testing as uh, creating those kind of frameworks and uh, technologies that can basically make that quality uh, the product quality even at a better level than before mm. that's true so largely uh, the, the, the goal remains to create better products and it and you could put in any name to designation right you can you can put in any uh, any nomenclature to designation but the eventual goal is to create products which create greater impact through quality and through distribution in general yeah i think uh, i think sdet as a skill is not the future of testing but uh, what what they are doing inherently that would be the future Correct. and that 
but they are doing to not be like just coding up the platform uh, specifications to the product it's doing such a much higher level to help everybody out there creating some platformish way of applying those a uh, framework to the product problem so that everybody gets a piece of the work that they have done got it got it got it uh, this is a uh... Not a pre-collected question, but this is a question which is coming in my head repeatedly. We we we're talking a lot about how testers should create value for the organization, right? So how do they understand this value creation process? And more importantly, if they're able to create this value, how do they communicate this value to their let's say their their leads or managers or directors? So how do they sensitize more themselves about value creation and what's the way of communicating that value which they've created? I, that's a great question ashutosh uh, because in the end everybody wants to create value and this is a very general way of saying what is the value you are creating but in the Correct. end uh, everybody does not under, I, at least no even if you talk, if you ask me what is the value i am creating i won't be able to answer that right Correct. the question is ki what do you define as value for uh, for pe- for uh, people from the q and as that side i expect uh, that value to be coming from uh, on making sure that whatever they are delivering at the end the product that they are delivering at the end that sh- that is free from bugs free from both from all the issues that were expect what were there plus it is a not higher in terms of the journey the the basically the flow and making sure that this is working not much better than expected so that is the value i expect the uh, qa team to provide and apart from that if they say how to communicate that value to the uh, yeah. to the lead leadership team majorly i think it's it's uh, more or less defined in what the work they have been doing and since uh in a lot of, i don't under, i don't know about the other companies but in zupi at least uh qa team hold the fort uh, like holds the fort to all the product releases right okay. it's in the end there <coughs> to see if it is good to go or not so giving them the final uh call on the on what we are delivering and in the end uh, expecting them to hold the fort for all the product that we are really we are releasing God. is basically giving them enough value to what they have been doing so Makes that sense. is how we are doing and i expect the other leaders to also do that because in the end uh, that is how they will be able uh, like may, i feel qa team should be enabling we would be enabling qa team to do better at their job got it uh, this is a very interesting question from uh, madhu and uh, this is related to we, we keep saying that and eventually the goal of the whole engineering team and product teams is to make make the products better but yeah. how do we fundamentally measure betterment so what's the metric to measure betterment is, is, is it nps is it let's say a certain increase in dau mau is it what is the what is the metric to measure betterment uh, from your understanding of things see uh, a product can be bet- can be made better in a lot of things one one of the ways is the way the journeys have been thought of there can be a lot of ui points which have been missed or some journeys which have not been done correctly inherently once the product is getting developed it can be evolved through very <coughs> focused focused eyes of the qa team once the uh, product is also launched okay there is a lot of feedback that comes in from the customers right, right? so i uh, there are there are very less folks who basically go and read that customer uh, feedback and basically use that to drive the next uh, iteration on that product okay so uh, i would expect the qa team to basically go and uh, get the opinion of the other users and, see, and read that customer feedback and make that product right. even better okay because in the end uh, i uh, making the product better is not just the, the goal of one product team or the design team or it's a collective responsibility <coughs> and when when we say quality quality means everything it does not mean quality at the at the time the app is released or at the time the product is released it means 
quality of that product in general to the end of the time got it makes a lot of sense uh, uh, because essentially uh, essentially uh, if you are not close to your customer then you are in a certain shell of your own and you 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 will you, you think you are making the best product in the market but the customer don't like it so if you are closer to the customer you will know what the what their voice is and you will be able to make a product which is more suitable to them by and large and that's why i, I generally recommend people to go to so uh, to essentially uh, engineers uh, so I, i know someone who runs a company who, who he asks his engineers to go on sales trips and then engineers are at times taking one day on a support chat understanding customer feedback what what kind of customer feedback is coming they're going to sales trips seeing what the customers are saying in that respect so that way is the business integration also happens very uh, holistically and engineers get a wider view of things on what they should be doing in terms of getting better business for the company yeah uh the, the next question uh, which i have is a fundamental question again uh what are the key skills you look for uh, in a in a tester by and large when you hire someone what are the key skills in a tester which you look for so uh, i look for three things majorly okay any two which are like more good i i can hire that okay. person so okay uh, first is majorly aptitude i can't okay. basically uh, go less on aptitude aptitude is one of the most important things to basically for any engineering person to have because Correct. if you have aptitude you are able to solve any problem Solu- solving a problem is what an engineer is capable of doing and that's the goal everybody should have the other thing uh, the second thing is perseverance perseverance Correct. is something that a qa has to has to have because uh, the ability to, to keep on doing the same thing again and again and again and again is very limited like i don't see a lot of folks to have it i don't expect everybody to have it but if a qa a person is there they must have that skill because in the end it takes time to get something uh, great and that time is basically iterations so perseverance is really important and the third most important thing is discipline uh, discipline Got is it. something that a lot of engineers take for granted but this is one of the core things that can make you grow or not make you grow so even if you have aptitude but you don't have discipline it will be a problem so discipline perseverance and aptitude these three things are very important to me when i hire a tester or any engineering Got person it. in general and that's that's very that's very relevant also because because perseverance speaks volumes about your resilience and your ability to solve problems so perseverance plus attitude aptitude will give you the problem solving ability right because even if you have the mind with you but if you're not perseverant you will not be able to, you will give it up at a uh, early stage of the problem right okay. but now my fundamental question once more to you okay aptitude is, is measurable objectively right you can do a test you can do a mathematical test mm-hmm. numerical ability test verbal ability test bunch of tests which you can do you can measure the ability uh, aptitude objectively but how do you measure someone's perseverance and discipline in a limited constraint of uh, multiple rounds of interview so actual picture comes out let's say a little later once the person starts to work but still at, uh, in, in the best possible way how do we measure these two slightly subjective parameters uh, in an interview process uh good question perseverance is uh, still uh, uh, testable because we can be, uh, what i do is i basically ask them a couple of questions on the current zupi app so sometimes they don't have the zupi app so i ask them to download the app okay and just find a bug in the app okay must many people say yeah they i found one okay i have to download it okay kaise karna hai kya karna hai so it shows that they are reluctant right they are not very focused on doing it it can also show a lot about how important that interview is to them but that's a different question but the other things are still uh, able to understand on discipline side i basically uh, make sure to understand when are they joining the interview how are they uh, how are they basically going forward with the interview are for example some people take the interviews on their phones right and 
then i make a point of asking them then why didn't you have a laptop with you where are you right now did you uh, inform in advance about uh, this situation can't we reschedule it etc etc so this basically shows how uh, important are people feeling about the interview and what i feel is that these things can be developed uh, and everybody has it it's just a matter of showing or having that mindset ki, okay i i need to show my discipline here i need to show exactly. that i am i am focused on the problem here so it's just a matter of that so yeah i do keep uh, checking these things it is difficult i also take help of my hr team and uh, the hr interview at the end it's also very important uh to understand how important that person is feeling towards the company and showing all the things like perseverance and discipline as well so based on the collective feedback of the interviews on the skills and the hr you take the final decision got it got it i think on testing i want to now move to a little tech side of things okay so considering uh, you are coming from a real money uh, uh, real money gaming app and there are a lot of apps these days which drive a lot of traffic to uh, traffic towards apps let's say like a hotstar or like a sony live or like a jio cinema these days right and jio cinema trended crazily on twitter when the first day of the world cup when they were back left right and center about the performance there so yeah. as a uh, so how do you how do you measure uh, how do you measure peak how do you estimate peak loads and how do you prepare for it and even if you estimate it let's say best to your capabilities because they're only estimates they'll still falter right so how do you how do you come back from a situation where the estimates also went wrong and you still have a very messy situation so what's your process towards doing this with your team members sure i will try to keep it short because i can keep on answering this question <laughs> for a lot of times so uh first to estimate uh, you need to go back to the drawing board and understand what your current load is okay there has to be a lot of monitoring added to your infrastructure so that you can start getting that data of how uh, what is the tps uh, what is the transactions per second that you are getting from the outside and how it is converting to internal or internal traffic so there will be an external uh, load uh, receiver or you can see external load balancer that will get the load and will transfer it to your external services then to internal services and finally to your databases it can also add a uh, load to your external parties like third party okay. apis party like way. you send sms or you send a notification etc so that payment. will also burden. yeah that will also be burdened if the load increases so uh, you will have to do the math understand what the current load is and <laughs> go back to the marketing team and understand ki uh, what is the scale that is expected for okay. example if they say currently is 10 tps and i am expecting it to go up to 20 tps then you will understand that i need to double the traffic then the next thing that comes is you run the load in your separate environment and check if it is able to work yeah. sufficient uh, happily or not if not then you do the scaling part so there are two types of scaling horizontal and vertical scaling mm -hmm. you basically increase the uh, the server's uh, capacity that is capacity. called vertical scaling yeah so for example your database is uh, is a server that can handle up to 4 cpu cores and 2 gb of ram so you will increase the ram you will increase the cores so that the database can handle more load okay similarly for applications you will try to increase the number of uh, servers so if there are two servers who are handling the load you will increase servers to four to double God. the load okay so you will keep on doing this and uh, somewhere you will hit that uh, that uh, you can <laughs> say a, a point do it more the then you will point. have to go back and change the code. Yeah. yeah you will have to then go back to and change the code now okay because oh, there's no, nothing yeah. you can do now you change the approach and then no. you will start uh, you can say caching data or you will basically start uh, putting in more layers of infrastructure in between so that you are able to handle the load and by dividing the load so uh, that's the first part of the question the second part is to basically uh, yeah Uh, what to do if the estimates are off so there is a part called auto scaling that is there 
so auto scaling is something that for example i say that i can currently handle 50 tps okay but if let us say uh, 70 tps comes for the additional ones i will not start the servers now but i will start when the load hits 70 tps correct. correct correct yeah so that is called auto scaling and this case this can also be added however this is also a limit to how much how much you can auto scale automatically auto -scale. Uh, once, you, once you reach that you need to also apply rate limiting so for example uh, in the geo cinemas case when the world cup so if let us say they are not able to handle that traffic they can basically restrict the last people that are coming to see the oh, game and okay, they can okay. say we will you are in queue we will basically make you help you see the match in the next five minutes when the load reduces example so in that Got way it. they'll be able to make sure that their current system is able to handle the load sufficiently for the people that they are seeing and the rest just may like not a, see just like a yeah. sbi branch when we let's say enter and try to enter they say there's a lot of load you have to wait for 10 minutes and then enter it's like just i can right? say that are equal i don't know how sbi's infrastructure is but no, no I, i'm uh, saying in, in general let's say uh, let's say a uh, let's say a more physical yeah. setup where where, where, where yeah. there are fixed number of counters there is a uh, already a lot of people entering inside and then yeah. there are a lot of people waiting outside they have to wait for a certain time like a airport queue yeah. these days something like that yeah. correct so in that way data rate limiter works and you can make that people wait oh. until you are able to handle that load and before that, you can implement auto scaling. You can keep on vertical scaling, horizontal scaling to make sure that you can you are able to manage as much people as you can. Got it. I think that was a very descriptive answer, and I think uh, the uh, stay, uh, hearing your answer, I think I can genuinely say that you love engineering problems to to core. You have uh, solved this uh, <laughs> the scaling problem quite diligently. Yeah, I think multiple uh, times. Yeah. Yeah, multiple. Been there, done that multiple times. It's like that. Got it. <clears throat> uh, I think there are a lot of questions coming, but I'll I'll quickly keep uh, uh, moving now. We'll 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 move, go a little fast, and I'll now enter into the leadership side of things. Uh, again, <clears throat> this is a question which is in testers' mind in general and in a lot of leaders' mind also, right? Because as you grow up in ladder, as you grow up in pyramid, the number of leadership roles gets limited, right? The pyramid gets uh, shortened as we uh, as we go up. So how do we keep employees growth? How do we make sure that employees grow when the when the limited leadership roles in an org? So how do you uh, how do you manage such kind of a situation? So for me, uh, how do I make sure that uh, the employees are growing? Is to basically. Uh, I basically don't go and talk to each and every every one of them. I try to create a platform where I act as an enabler, okay, okay. to so, so that they can reach their highest potential. Everybody okay. knows what they are doing and what they need to do. I don't have to go and tell them, okay, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that. I just need to make sure that I'm enabling them to reach there, right? If there is a blocker or that obstacle that comes their way, I am the first person that they should call and I should be able to resolve that. So that's how my leadership style is, my working style is. The I do not try to go and micromanage. I want people to make mistakes because only then they will be able to grow. My okay. uh, What I can do as a person, as, a sub, as an enabler, is to make sure I give them room to make mistakes. Sometimes mm -hmm. when I'm not able to give the give them that room because there has been some critical things that need to be delivered. Then I will step in and say that. However, most of the times I make sure that they are able to learn by themselves because only then they will be able to grow. I don't want to like take that away from them. It's their journey. They should lead the way that they want to. Yeah, they want to do. And that's true. Yeah. And the last thing is, uh, I try. To to make sure that I am focusing more on processes than people. So right. the more processes are in place, there is very less dependency on people. And then in the way the ecosystem is built for, for all people together. Okay, there is very less dependency on who has done what in the past. And there is very less chance mm. of failure or miscommunication. And there should be uh, specifically there are there is there should be very less 
politics etc in the system because Correct. in the that's end it's right. all that's the same thing there is nothing that is done on the basis of what one person is saying so Correct. those are the couple of things i try to make make sure that i'm doing to make sure the team grows got it uh again uh, this was a question with us also and this is question by aske madhu also uh so this is the question uh how do i show this on stage just a minute okay this is not on hmm. so this is a question uh, uh which we can get this is a question coming now also what are the major challenges you face long term as well as short term in dealing with or handling an engineering team by and large okay so handling an engineering team uh, is not very not an easy job uh, <laughs> actually handling any team is not easy engineering team is one of the most difficult teams to handle because you need to make sure you are uh, you are being right by everybody and that's not possible at all so i try to make sure that i am meeting everyone in the middle sometimes and sometimes it is also not possible uh, challenges that i have faced in short term are uh, are the simple challenges that uh, some very good talent is leaving the company that i have faced okay. that problem and that has also that has been one of the major blockers to a lot of things that have that have been going on uh, some uh, making sure that everybody is is happy is one of the very uh, difficult problems which i called as stakeholder management making sure that our internal engineering team is working very smoothly with other external teams like marketing product crm etc so since it's a tech company every other function wants to work with the tech team because they are dependent on them even our finance team is dependent on the tech team so to make sure that everything is running smoothly is one of the major things and yeah those are the challenges i have faced long term challenges i feel one of the bigger challenges is uh, employer or you can say tech branding that right. is still uh, because zuki as a company has uh, come out to the world in this year only before right. it was not known to everybody uh, and right. still uh, i think a lot of people who have joined in may not know about zuki so correct uh, hiring in such a uh, not known staff <laughs> not known is setup, very yeah. difficult yeah, it's very difficult yeah even if you have the money uh, you can basically get people but i don't believe that money is the only solution to getting good people in house so yeah that's a uh, long term hiring <laughs> has been a big challenge branding is a major challenge because uh, no matter how good the team is or how good the work we are doing still people want the uh, everything to be shown to the world and i also okay. want that to happen so making sure it works with the company it's little bit difficult god i think hiring is a uh, it's almost like a actually skill problem for all the tech companies these days as much you you can't buy a person for a long time with just only dollars you have to do a lot of other stuff also in general which brings me to my next question uh, which you already took me to the my next question is what's your approach towards hiring in general what do you uh, how do you process hiring in general i think hiring uh, is one of my key responsibilities also so i put a lot of time and effort into hiring uh, that and building the team that we have uh, i've already told the the skills that i look for in hiring rather than and the more when i uh, 2021 had been a very like a bad year for hiring in general because yeah. uh, for at least the employers it has been really bad maybe the employees were very happy getting very good packages all around but for us it has been really difficult uh, the idea was to make sure that we are hiring people not just <coughs> for the money but also for what they are getting in terms of the uh the people that are their mentorship that they are getting the work that they have been doing in gaming uh, there's a lot of fun work and you yeah, can't yeah. just stop learning so to make sure people are excited about the work that they will be getting and not asking the top of their head money it's been very difficult and uh, uh hiring uh to make sure that we are doing that has been one of my key roles so um, 
yeah and uh, to solve that we uh, in the hiring uh, in the uh, talent acquisition space we have been trying to make sure that we are interviewing the right candidates we are not right interviewing every, every we make sure that we are uh, screening the profiles and on the top of it we are putting as much information as we have from zupi side to them to understand uh -huh. if they are very excited to join zupi or not many times people just uh, come for window shopping like okay i'll get two offers yeah. and then i will One select the biggest offer correct we try to make sure that people uh, we are hiring are not doing that either we try to make sure that they are uh, accepting or they are happy with the offer that we are giving or we try to make sure that we are not wasting each other's time by doing interviews if oh. it is not going to get them so yeah that's that's my take Makes on hiring it's yeah. it has changed a lot from my experience yeah. with amazon in the first in 2012 <laughs> to 2022 things have been really really oh, uh, different changing. now rapidly changing yeah that's true the whole the whole uh... the whole game has changed of hiring since then since the control yeah okay uh, i have a lot of questions but uh, i think in, in the interest of time i'll take some audience question uh, so if you can answer this uh, considering you have a eagles i view but if you can answer this as much as possible it will be helpful uh, this is a question from navant uh, who is a analyst at at pro what are the key challenges of automation testing from your view as an engine leader so um for startups i believe uh, automation testing is very difficult because it comes when the systems are stable and developed uh, for uh, startups things are never really fully developed they keep on never developing done. and in a stale way not there is no uh, you can say documentation on what the apis are and once the documentation is ready the apis must have changed so Correct. for an automation testing to be there in a startup it's very difficult uh if you are starting from scratch we can uh, there is a problem then there is a solution also we can basically solve that by doing some kind of codeless testing codeless automation if it is possible so make sure that we are reaching the final solution faster and not like spending more time in coding things that might change later so that that's what basically i'm expecting automation testing to do uh yeah so yeah for Next the bigger option. companies uh, where the solutions are pretty much uh, prepared in in a very thoughtful way in a very yeah. slow fashion <laughs> it's easy, easier yeah, and easy. sometimes we basically uh, do the testing code first so that we are able to uh, do development easy in faster and in a very uh, you can say non buggy way understood Uh, yeah the difference is quite evident and i think the solutions which you're giving is uh, uh, they make a lot of sense in general uh this is a question which is about uh, how do we measure the balance between speed and uh, velocity and stability let's say how, how, the, the, it's it's always a trade off right it's always a trade off that how do we measure that balance between velocity and stability so uh, i believe the stability is something that can can never be compromised okay it because that's a core skill of the engineering and uh, nobody in that whole ecosystem is focusing on stability but they are expecting the tech to do it okay so mm -hmm. for uh, for an engineering leader i feel that stability should never be compromised it should always be as the the first guiding principles to saying that something is working Correct. or not okay velocity is something that uh, that is still manageable okay uh, we can put more people on the problem we can put more time on the problem to solve that however stability is something uh, should never be compromised but yes if you are talking about, not about stability but the the focus on at how uh, that what is the level of quality we need to solve i believe that this is still debatable uh, the level of quality versus velocity is still something that can be mutually agreed on between the product and the engineering leaders to make sure that we are reaching an accepted accepted product okay Correct. and it depends on what kind of product we are making for example if we are making an mvp 
or we are making something for a product market fit we don't want to waste a lot of time in solving the edge cases which rather come up because that product is not working okay that might not even work for the customer and we don't even uh, face those edge cases in future so the the idea is to make sure something is working for 80% of the cases so mm-hmm. for i basically apply an 80 20 rule which is like a generic mm-hmm. rule to make sure that uh, 80% of the work is done in 20% of the time and if that work uh, 80% of the work is sufficient to meet the ta- end target expectation i would rather not spend the less next 80% of the time on that god may i make a lot of sense so it depends on uh, it depends a lot on the product stage also right if it's a mature product then you would also want to work on stability if it's a new product then you will want to churn out releases very faster and then stability can still take a little backers back seat but uh, that's the difference in the product stage uh, slightly technical question but still because it's upvoted i have to take this because it's been asked by a lot of people uh, see uh, if you can answer this uh, what is the importance of having automation around mobile games or video based applications uh, how do we ensure we are touching the threshold on these applications so because mo- mobile games are quite uh, quite uh, different as compared to a web application or a mobile application so how do we uh, do automation what's your view on this um okay can you show that question because i Man, want to read yeah, it again cool so yeah i think uh, mobile games or any kind of a game or a application needs to be completely tested it rather be on automation or not it is a question of how quickly or how easily you want to get the product out it's it's not something that i can be uh, telling that about automation definitely should be there in mobile games because uh, a game once it is out it is basically the the final version of it you don't change the game very often okay and in the subsequent releases if something goes wrong then it's a major fall because that whole game <coughs> has gone for a toss so having automation is really very very important for mobile games and video based applications Uh, at least after the product market fit has been reached then it is really uh, like more than 100% it should always be there and uh, i don't understand actually the second part of the question what is the yeah, threshold uh, that is yeah that's a little uh, well, i think there's a little typo there in the question so i think uh, for this moment i think let's go ahead for the next question so i'll ask the last question which which i have and i think i should ask uh, leaders like you here uh, before we end this session uh, i know there are a lot of questions left to all the people i will try and get answers to these questions from jyoti uh, you know more offline setup uh, async way and then share it with everyone on our, on our discord community but because we are almost time and it, it's almost late on a work day so that's my last last question at this moment so uh, now they nowadays due to whatever macroeconomic environment we are seeing around the whole world uh, there are a lot of layoffs happening right every a lot of companies which have never laid off in past let's say like a uh, like a stripe or like a meta like some other somebody else people who mm-hmm. who are been out for their work culture by and large are also firing or laying off people in india of course there is there are some which are coming out on news there are some which are happening under the carpet right so two parts to this question uh, as a leader how do you handle this kind of situation because from business perspective you might have to do this but how do you communicate and how do you handle this kind of a sensitive situation because it it has a ba- it is a long lasting impact on company's culture team's culture your work attitude right and secondly how as team members or employees can they prepare themselves better to this so from a leadership perspective this is a this is one of the really grave or bad situations to be in to basically call the layoffs with uh, the whole people uh believe me when i say this I'll, it ha- uh, whenever there is a situation like this it has it w- would have been revisited like 10000 times with the whole leadership team in That's multiple true. different scenarios multiple different times and with different type of people even the investors etc so everyone would have been involved and everything would have reached to that decisions to call the layoffs uh, 
once that has done the, the idea is to make sure we make we enable people to basically find the next good thing in their life as soon as possible or as quickly as possible that is the goal of the employer and to make sure that uh, they are not losing out from uh, that they are they make the easy transition to the next role uh, whatever can be done to support them that is something that is on the mind of the employer and uh, when when we say about who is going to lay who is going to be getting laid off uh, many times it's a call of the business in terms of the numbers that they crunch about the salaries about the value uh, the value that the teams are driving and uh, majorly how critical they are to the end product that has been done it right. would be really hard but there will be some support functions which may not be very like uh, paid in good salaries but they will be laid off first because they are the ones who are on contractual basis or basically they are ones who can be uh, easily hired back when the volumes rise okay uh, apart from that uh, in engineering this is the first year uh, 2022 that i have seen layoffs happening in engineering teams otherwise layoffs don't don't generally happen in the engineering teams in engineering also the the layoffs majorly happen for the products or basically the functions that have not been able to create value from a long period of time and they have become now a liability so we need to go back and understand what have we have been doing and most of the times it is not the fault of any one person it's a collective responsibility of the whole business and the engineering when they okay. reach this so that's that's how uh, layoffs typically work and uh, from a from a employee side how can you be uh, prepared for layoff you can never be really prepared for a layoff but what yeah. you can do is to make sure that you are all re- always focusing on learning some knowledge rather than yeah. uh, laying uh, like laying and just making sure that you are doing the next task that you have been given because in the end whatever learnings and skills you have will be able will help you to get the next job okay and uh, just make sure that we uh, uh, that you are on point on what you what the skills are uh, there and you are keep you keep on learning on your learning. responsibilities responsibility so that you can get the next job easily and very frankly speaking uh, when uh, even if layoffs are happening there are companies who are still hiring even zupi yeah. is hiring so, so it doesn't so yeah the idea is that uh, there is no dearth of jobs in the in the industry t- at least for tech engineering side there has never been a dearth of jobs there has always been a lack of uh, people who are at that level so just make sure that we are learning and reaching that level sooner so that we can basically get hired f- faster got it makes a lot of sense i think uh, this is a very sensitive situation uh, sensitive topic and i think you handled it quite uh, maturely in all respect so i think we are almost time now we started at 9:05 we are almost at 10:05 and this is quite late in india and i think people joining from south east asia might also be feeling a little late as a moment i i would like to thank you jyoti once again for taking time out and answering our questions patiently if some of our questions were I, not as logical or as matured please forgive us for and yeah thank you jyoti once again any closing words thank you so much everybody i would uh, really like to an- would like to answer all the questions i'm sorry i have not been able to answer all the questions but yeah. i will expect a coach to reach me out and would try to answer as much as possible sure. you guys can also sure. reach me uh on linkedin cool then i think uh, thank you jyoti once again and thank everybody for tuning in can't thank you thank all of you enough for uh, this amazing session and uh, the kind of love which you have shown to all of us here thank you thank you thank you